building a pair of Chinese cook's knives, profiling to heat treatment, William Hovey Smith, 2019. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting and also a wild game cook. I also have a new knife company where I build knives based on ancient Chinese patterns from 3,000 years ago. Also, I have a new business book on entrepreneurship, and this video will expound on all of these topics. This is Hobie Smith, the Backyard Sportsman, and we're in our knife shop today, and what we've been tasked to do is produce two of my Chinese cook's knives here. Now this is a broad bladed knife, and it's meant to do several purposes. It's a scraper like this. It's a detail cutter. Mm -hmm. Of course, an excellent chopper. And you can cook on sheet steel with it, serve with a blade, and break up spices on a bowl, and it hangs by the workstation. So a very useful and utilitarian knife. Well, wouldn't you know, of all the knife blanks I have on the back wall back there, I do not have a blank for this knife. So consequently, uh, we're having to make one. And our starting point is one of our cleavers, which has the same general profile, but is of course considerably larger blade. So what we've done is taken the angle grinder and removed the excess material and reshaped it. So that's what we have here and that's what we're about. Now this excess material here of course removes considerable weight from the blade. It makes it a lighter, more useful tool. This will still be a very heavy, robust knife. In my prize-winning outdoor books, like Extreme Muzzleloading, I talk about hunting and also cooking wild game. And this ultimately led to me going back to ancient Chinese origins, the Chinese Bronze Age, 3,000 years ago, and picking up patterns of bronze knives and making them now out of modern carbon and stainless steels in my shop in central Georgia, and cooking with them. This ultimately led to the production of my newest book, Create Your Own Job Security, Plan to Start Your Own Business at Midlife, where I advocate that a person start a whole series of businesses throughout their lives to raise money or accomplish their life goal. After absorbing this much work and this much energy, uh, you can imagine that blade is very hot indeed. Okay, we've done the basic cut. It's very irregular here. So I'm going to true this up a little bit with a grinder and then put it on a wheel. This metal is not yet hardened, so it's still soft. So you have to be careful in removing these nails that you do not, in fact, bend the blade. It's fairly easy straightened at this stage but anything you have to do to keep from bending it so much the better. I'm still a little leery about touching it. It just absorbed an enormous amount of heat. All right, so now we're closer to where we want to be and we'll put it on a 
grinding wheel and do the shaping. You can see a lot of things are pretty ragged about what's going to be the blade here. So we're going to address that with this grinding wheel. But first I'm going to put on some gloves. Just pull those little feathers off because they tend to fly and will hit the eyes if you're not careful. Okay, we are now there. We now have a blank and it's shaped and ready to edge and I'm going to reprofile this a little bit. Better than that, yeah, we'll have to do it on the belt thing. I'm making a grinding board here, which will enable us to hold the knife against the belt sander without having to physically hold it in hand. And it also allows a better precision in the grinding of the blade. And as you can see in the background, I'm also now shaping my handle materials. We're using an African wood called Padak, and it's a very colorful wood as you can see. And it came in a plank, so I've had to split the plank and then uh, shape the handles itself and rough cut them on the bandsaw. And I'll show you a little bit of that. This plank is Burmese rosewood. And this is the African padak that I'm actually working with. You can see the padak has a slightly deeper, redder color and certainly gives a red dust. Uh, I can't say I've ever cut a wood, even desert iron wood, that gave this much brilliant red dust. But we're able to take it and split it and get actually a one pair of scales uh, from each section of the wood, so that's good. As much of the material as I can remove with a bandsaw means much less I have to work with with the grinder and the belt sander, so uh, this is a good expedient. I'll actually set these ends here once we drill the holes and actually put it on the steel so I'm sure I get exactly the point I want so far as the length of the handle goes. But when you cut like this you always want to put the smooth side against the steel 
because you're going to work this side anyway. So we're off to a very good start here with the grip materials. We have taken our blades which have now been edged and we're putting them in these foil packages. This is stainless steel foil in preparation for heat treating. Now for T410 steel, which this is, the heat treatment regime is to cook them for 45 minutes at 1850 degrees and let them stand and temper them by putting them on by putting them between two aluminum sheets like this and in addition I put 25 pounds of lead shot on top of them just to keep them stable and to help prevent warping this little bits of paper burns up the oxygen and keeps them from being so oxidized during the heat treatment so it makes the polishing easier. So we seal these up and double crimp them so they'll form an airtight container as near as we can get. We folded them once and now we fold them a second time. Crimp again. And now they'll go in the oven. I've loaded the oven now very carefully because I'd already heated something in it this morning and everything in it and about it is very hot indeed. So we're going to go ahead and close it up and actually start it up. This oven is pre-programmed so once we select the correct program we'll be good. Among my outdoor books are backyard deer hunting, crossbow hunting, extreme muzzleloading, and practical bow fishing. And all of these contain recipes that anybody who can turn on a stove can cook. My new business book, Create Your Own Job Security, advocates that a person start a whole series of businesses throughout their life so that they can raise money as it's needed, advance themselves in their professional career, and ultimately have a business starting while they're actually working for someone else. So should they become suddenly unemployed in their 40s or 50s, they already have their business developed to fall back on. In the next video, I'm going to show the final stages of finishing, trademarking, and using these knives. For more information about my books, blogs, and more than 725 videos, you can go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. For more information about my Chinese-inspired cooking knives, go to Hovies Knives of China blog.co. For more information about my business books, go to createyourownjobsecurity.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye. And God bless.